setting preload on a hydraulic roller setup and an LS motor. So when we go over this today, there's going to be a couple of key terms that you need to know. First is going to be the base circle on the camshaft. So when we set the preload, we're going to use the base circle. That's going to be the side of the camshaft right here, away from the lobe. So we want to make sure that the roller is riding on the base of the camshaft. We'll go over that once it's in the motor and show you how you're going to find that. The next we're going to look at is what we're actually doing with the lifter. So when we set preload, the push rod is going to sit in the cup of the lifter and it's actually going to push down into the lifter. So when we use the term preload, that's what we're talking about is the, the preload on the lifter. Uh, with a Tones Motorsports lifter, we're going to want to see about 50 thousandths preload. Uh, we'll show you how we find that. Okay, so the first step in finding your uh, preload is finding out where you are on the camshaft. So as you can see with this motor, we're already set up. We've uh, pulled off the intake and the exhaust rocker for one side just so that we can show you what it is that we're doing. When you take your push rod and put it in, you want to make sure you're in the cup of the lifter just like we talked about. So as you come down, if you come into the side of it, as you turn the motor through, you're going to get no motion with so again, very important that you're going to check and make sure that you're in there. As we check, if you turn through, you can see there's no movement with this because we are not in the lifter right now. That's something that's pretty easy to do on aftermarket blocks, not so easy to do on a stock block because of the way the guides are set up on them. So as we take this and set it into it, you can see it sits a little bit higher and as you put it in, you can feel it center itself where it's actually holding. It's not trying to move around in here. We're going to take a finger and put on it just so that we have a little bit of pressure and we're going to turn the motor through. As we turn it through, what we're looking for is that base circle. So we're going to come up and down on the lobe of the camshaft and then look for the center there. So as we're turning, there we go, now we're moving through. And at this point we're coming up. Now back down, so now we're coming back down to that base circle that we can work off of. No more movement with it, so know where we're going to be. So what we're going to start with is finding zero lash. Zero lash is going to be when we have no up and down movement with the rocker, but we still have left and right, okay? So with the push rod still in the cup of the lifter, and now in the cup of the rocker arm, up top here, not sitting to the side, we're going to go ahead and start bringing this down. And as we get it closer, we're going to be moving, and you can feel, you can hear the clack up and down and still have the left and right. So if we're moving up and down as it goes away, at that point you see that it's gone now. We can no longer move up or down with it, but we still have lateral movement. So that's going to be our zero latch. Now at this point, we're going to use the number of turns it takes to figure out how much preload we have, uh, we have depressed on the lifter. Now starting from the 12 o'clock position, we're going to turn until we get the click from the torque range letting us know that we've reached 25 foot-pounds. We're looking for a three-quarter turn to one and a quarter turn. Under three-quarter, push rod's too short. Over one and a quarter, the push rod's too long. So we're going to come down. We've got one and three-quarter turns. So in this example, we've got a push rod that's too long. We had a 8175 push rod in there. When we torqued it, we went to one and three quarter turn. So what we've got to do is get it back to that three quarter to one and a quarter. That's going to be our sweet spot for this lifter. So in order to reduce it, to get it to the right length, we're going to go ahead and take it back 25 thousandths. With an LS17 rocker, we're going to see about 50 thousandths of preload per full turn. So by switching this, this should bring us from just shy of one and three quarter to just shy of one and a quarter. That's going to put us right where we want to be. So now we're switching to an 8150 from an 8175. Now we're anticipating it's going to fall between one and one and a quarter turns. So it's going to be towards the top side of our preload. It's going to help quieten everything down a little bit. Um, but it's going to fall in that usable range. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're setting where there is no up or down movements, there's no clatter, but we still have the lateral movement. This tells us that we've got the zero lash that we need to set it. We're going to set the torque wrench to 25 foot pounds, just like we did on the others. And we're coming to the 12 o'clock position. Now we're going to come around 
and we're looking for that just over one, just under a quarter. And there we go. So we have now found the proper length push rod for this. The procedure for finding it on the intake and the exhaust is going to be the same. Uh, most of the stock GM heads you're going to find, they use the same push rod length. As you use aftermarket heads, you'll see that a lot of times the intakes and the exhaust are a different length. So you're going to follow the same procedure for the intake as you did for the exhaust and verify that you have the same length for both. If you need eight of one size, eight of another, that's going to be completely normal, especially for an aftermarket head like this. Quick tech tip for the intake rocker, once you have found your push rod length and you have the proper length push rods in it, the push rod hole on CNC ported heads is going to, it's actually going to go through to the runner on most of them. So if you install the stud dry or install the bolt dry, you're going to end up getting some oil seepage through. So the way we're going to fix that is by putting a small dab of silicone on it. Now silicones, without getting too in depth with it, you've got some that are going to cure with oxygen, some with the absence of oxygen, uh, some that are going to cure soft, some that are going to cure hard. What we're going to look for in this is just using your typical black silicone. So this is uh, Ultra Black's uh, AutoZone O'Reilly's, anywhere like that's going to sell it. And when you put it on, put your bolt through. Don't take it out, put it on, and then run it through where you're going to take every bit of that silicone and you're going to put it in the trunnion on the rocker. So take it and put it through. And then we're just putting a small dab on there. So as we put it on, that's about all you're going to need right there. You don't need to worry too much about spreading it in. Just get it on, and as you tighten it, it's going to get caught in all the threads and it's going to prevent any leaking. So we're all set with the same length push rod intake and exhaust on this particular head. Now that we're done with it, the last thing I recommend is turning the motor through to get every single one of them on the base circle and check and torque. Again, all that looks like is going back to the front of the motor just like when you were looking for the base circle to begin with, coming through, and watching the next one you're going to torque for the movements. Now we've come up and down with both of them. And as we turn through, you'll see it go all the way through the motion. So now with both of these up, we're just gonna take, check that out. Make sure that there's no possible way that we torqued it down while we were on a lobe um, that allowed it to give us indication that it's tight when it wasn't actually tight and have it come loose once the motor's running. So now with it there, we're just gonna get these two. We know they're both on the base circle. The ones behind it we can see aren't, so we're not gonna check them. We're gonna turn through and check every one of them individually. Once we're done with that, we've got the preload set, rockers are torque, you're ready to go. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is the first episode, but we're going to do several after this to go through everything about building these LS engines to make sure the products that we sell, you're able to install as seamless as possible. Make sure to click the bell below. Uh, that way you can get a notification anytime we have a new video. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you've got something you really want to see, send an email to sales at thompsonmotorsports.net and we'll make sure that we're watching those so that we can continue to add to this series and give you everything that you're looking for in it. You can also watch us on Facebook or Instagram. We've got videos and uh, photos going daily. Have a great day.